to our dynamic and supportive professor, Mrs. Narisa and Beatrice, to my classmates, fellow teachers, good day. I am Donabel A. Tolatre, teacher one of Santo Niño Elementary School, Buhi North District. Let us talk about behavioral learning theory. What is behavioral learning theory? In our class, there will be a student who is usually difficult to manage and work with. Their behavior is usually hard to control and it can be extra work to get them pay attention and stop distracting others. Siguro dahil may pinagdadaanan sila or some sort of family problem. If you are studying to become a teacher, your courses will help you learn classroom management techniques that will prepare you for difficult students. So, katulad ngayon, pinag-aaralan natin yung mga, siguro, mga, mga techniques kung paano ba i-handle yung mga ganung bata. Or, way back in college, we were able to study different techniques on how to manage students. Additionally, it is extremely valuable, valuable to learn about learning theories and recognize that there are different methods and thoughts about how people learn. O, tayo nga, tayo mismo sa sarili natin, we have different ways to learn. And katulad sa bata, we should know, kailangan nating malaman kung ano ba talaga yung pinagdadaanan nila sa buhay or sa bahay nila or kung ano man yung environment na kinalakihan nila kung bakit sila nag-aak ng ganun or why they behave that way. Behaviorism or the behavioral learning theory is a popular concept that focuses on how students learn. Behaviorism focuses on the idea that all behaviors are learned through interaction with the environment. So, when we say behaviorism, of course, from the word itself, behavior, uh, meaning to say, yung child or yung bata ay natututo through the, in, through the interaction with the environment. Uh, this learning theory states that behaviors are learned from the environment and says that innate or inherited factors have very little influence on behavior. So, somehow, parang totoo naman na ang bata ay natututo based sa environment na kanilang kinalakihan. Let's say, for example, sa loob ng bahay, kung ano yung nakikita nila sa parents nila, syempre, ganun yung magagaya nila. A common example of behaviorism is positive reinforcement. Let's say for example, a student gets a small treat if they get 100% on their spelling test. In the future, students work hard and study for their test in order to get the reward. So, Positive re reinforcement is not only for students para, para mag-work hard. Siguro, para na rin sa sarili natin, uh, kailangan din natin ng positive reinforcement para magawa natin yung goal natin sa buhay. Uh, behaviorism is key for educators because it impacts how students react and behave in the classroom. Uh, of course, Para maintindihan natin yung bata, why they behave that way, aalamin natin yung, yung environment na kinalakihan nila. And suggests that teachers can directly influence how their students behave. So, kapag ka nahalatan natin or napansin natin na yung bata ay hindi naman nagbebehave ng maayos, we should not reprimand them immediately. Instead, we must ask or we must learn kung bakit ganyan nagbe-behave yung bata, bakit ganyan yung behavior niya. It also helps teachers to understand 
that a student's home environment and lifestyle have impact on their behavior, helping them see it objectively and work to assist with improvement. Now, let us also discuss the history of behaviorism. Behaviorism started as a reaction against introspective psychology in the 19th century, which relied heavily on first-person accounts. J.B. Watson and D.F. Skinner rejected introspective methods as being subjective and unquantifiable. When we say subjective, ibig sabihin, yung bagay na yan ay nakabase lang sa kanyang pananaw, paninindigan, sa kanyang, basta sa kanya lang. These psychologists wanted to focus on observable, quantifiable events and behaviors. They said that science should take into account only observable indicators. So, hindi inapprove ni J.B. Watson and B.F. Skinner yung behaviorism. Kasi daw, dapat sa science lang maniniwala. Uh, they help bring psychology into higher relevance by showing that it could be accurately measured and understood. And it wasn't just based on opinion. So, kaya hindi inapprove kasi dapat daw hindi lang magbe-base lahat sa opinion. Kailangan may explanation ng science tungkol doon. Watson and Skinner believed that if they were given a group of infants, the way they, they were raised and the environment they put them in would be the ultimate determining factor for how they acted, not their parents or their genetics. A Pavlov's dog is a popular behaviorism experiment. A group of dogs would hear a bell ring and then they would be given food. After enough time, when the bell would ring, the dogs would salivate, expecting the food bef before they saw, they even saw it. This is exactly what behaviorism ar argues, that the things we experience and our environment are the drivers of how we act. A stimulus response sequence is a key element of understanding behaviorism. A stimulus is given, for example, a bell rings and the response is what happens next. A dog salivates or a pellet of food is given. Behavioral learning theory argues that even complex actions can be broken down into a stimulus response. So, parang katulad din yan ng positive reinforcement. A reward is given if you did well in school or in your work.